HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Fire Department hosted their annual open house. You'll learn about selecting good pumpkins for fall decoration and our tip from angels. We'll recap the Hopkinton High School National Honor Society induction ceremony, plus much more. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Okay, good luck already. In three, two, one, go! <laughs> The Hopkinton Lions Club chose two lucky raffle winners that won four minutes to run around Price Chopper and grab just about whatever groceries they can get their hands on. It was exciting. It was fun for a great cause, though. The proceeds from the raffle went to benefit Project Just Because, Mass Eye Research, among other numerous local causes. Well, the main intent of the, uh, the grocery dash was to try to uh, raise funds for the Hopkinton Lions Club and support uh, some of the you know, numerous charities we support in town and within Massachusetts. Eric from Ashland was one of the lucky winners that got to collect some free groceries. Uh, I think well, almost 700. I think this gentleman is <laughs> going to be well above that. Good for him. Right. He had a good strategy. Jim Ryan was also one of the winners, and he collected groceries for a teacher at the Hopkinton Learning Center, Melody Ring, who was battling pancreatic cancer. Uh, it was today. great. I uh, grew up watching the show, so uh, when uh, my aunt uh, won and offered me the chance to run for her, uh, I was uh, ecstatic. Were you satisfied with yeah. the amount of groceries you got? Definitely, definitely. I missed one aisle that was on the plan, but um, besides that, uh, very happy. All of it's, um, or 99% of it's being donated to uh, someone at the Learning Center of Hopkinton, um, uh, part of the family there who's um, ill, and um, uh, so it's going to be going towards her and uh, to help take care of her. That's why I spent so much time in the frozen food aisle trying to get uh, meals for her. A few weeks ago, the Learning Center hosted a bake sale to raise funds to help the longtime Hopkinton Learning Center teacher. The grocery dash was a lot of fun for all and benefited several great causes. 39-year-old James Vallis is a founding partner of Blackstone Valley Wealth Management located at 22 South Street in Hopkinton. Mr. Vallis is currently celebrating a prestigious honor. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Uh, we recently recognized, or I was recently recognized, uh, as a winner of what's called the Worcester Business Journal's uh, 40 Under 40 Award. And it recognizes uh, 40 business leaders uh, in the local community under the age of 40 years old. 169 Hopkinton High School students were inducted into the Hopkinton National Honor Society this year. Since 1921, the National Honor Society has served to honor those students who have demonstrated excellence in areas of character, scholarship, leadership, and service. This photo is of Angels Garden Center owner Jeff Doherty and former owner of the Hopkinton Country Plus store, Judy Coffey. The antique and gift shop was open 34 years in downtown Hopkinton until early May of this year due to their leased Main Street location being sold to a new owner. Judy Coffey is back, however, and open with her new store Seasons, currently open at Angels Garden Center on 65 School Street. This photo was taken by HCAM's Mike Terosian over the Columbus Day weekend. The old scoreboard was removed from the Hopkinton High School Athletic Center. The scoreboard was the centerpiece of the Athletic Center for the last 15 years. This photo was submitted of former Hiller football captains Hank Rudden, Sam and Jake Lehman suiting up for Stonehill College. 
Here is another contributed photo of the Hillers volleyball team trying out their uniforms for the upcoming annual Dig Pink fundraising game. The Hillers take part in the fundraiser every year, which is to support the Side Out Foundation for cancer research and awareness. If you have a cool photo you want to share with us, email news at hcam.tv. And don't forget, for more on these stories and everything else going on in Hopkinton, check out our website, hcam.tv. Every year, the Hopkinton Fire Department hosts their annual open house in coordination with Fire Prevention Week. This year, the Fire Department showed off some newer equipment they have been using and had many activities for kids to raise awareness about fire safety. Despite the rain, many were on hand for the Hopkinton Fire Department open house. The event was to raise fire safety awareness, as well as show off equipment and allow the community to meet their local firefighters. My name is Tim Healy, I'm with the Hopkinton Fire Department. We're here at the open house. Uh, we're just demonstrating some of the equipment that we have here on the ambulance. Uh, right here we have the uh, Lucas CPR device that helps us do CPR in the ambulance um, while it's moving, provides a safe environment for our guys, and gives us consistent CPR so we have good outcomes when we have people who are in sudden cardiac arrest. Right down here we have um, some uh, uh, pieces of equipment that we use to get IV access. If uh, someone doesn't have good IV access, we can use this dr uh, drill to uh, drill into their bone to give them uh, life-saving medication. And lastly, on the end here, we have uh, the cardiac monitor, uh, which uh, offers defibrillation for someone who's in cardiac arrest and uh, helps us uh, when people are having a heart attack. We can send the EKG directly to the hospital so the uh, doctors can uh, look at it and streamline the patient's flow uh, to the cardiac catheterization lab. And that's what we're doing here. Hi, I'm Tom Poor. I'm the Fire Prevention Officer at Hopkinton Fire Department. Uh, what we're doing here today is uh, just simulating a smoke detector going off uh, in the middle of the night and what a child would do. So uh, my son Will here is going to kind of demonstrate. So we're going to have him pretend like he's sleeping. And the, the, go the goal is, is I'm going to set off the smoke detector. We're going to have him pretend to stay low when he gets out of bed, not stand up in the smoke. And then we're simulating the smoke over there with the sheet hanging down. So that's what he's going to work on. You ready, Will? Mm -hmm. All right. So he stays nice and low. And he crawls under the smoke. He actually takes it a little further. He's doing a little stop, drop, cover, and roll. And then he's pretending to go over to his meeting spot. And that's kind of the four things we kind of try to cover when we do this uh, child safety station. Also at the open house, the Hopkinton Fire Department was raising funds to fight muscular dystrophy. For over 60 years, the International Association of Firefighters has helped raise funds for the MDA and is currently their largest national partner. I uh, just have the open house today. We're doing a uh, extra fill the boot for the MDA of Massachusetts, hoping to raise some money for uh, a cure for muscular dystrophy. And despite uh, the rain here, it seems like a pretty good turnout at the open house. Yeah, surprisingly we have a really good turnout. Uh, rain in, the Patriots play in an hour. Uh, Tom Brady's coming back, so we're, we're thankful that everybody's come out and is uh, supporting the fire department. At the open house, the new Hopkinton Fire Department ladder truck was also on display. Despite rain hitting hard throughout the day, a great turnout was on hand at the fire station to enjoy the many activities during the open house. Still to come on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with programming coming up on our HCAM channels with the HCAM Insider. Owner of Angels Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, will give you tips on choosing the perfect pumpkin for your holiday decor, and over 160 students were welcomed into the Hopkinton High School National Honor Society. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com.
and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. With Halloween coming up and the fall in full swing, owner of Angel's Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, gave some tips on choosing the perfect pumpkin on his latest HCAM News segment, Tips from Angel's. Hi, my name is Jeff Doherty and I'm at Angel's Garden Center. Today I'm going to give you a few hints on buying pumpkins. At this time of year, in the month of October, Everyone's getting ready for fall decorations, and pumpkins are an integral part of that decoration. I have some samples here of different pumpkins, and what I'd like to show you is some of the new varieties that have come out, and the new method that we use to cut pumpkins to save the stem. As you can see, a pumpkin has four to five tentacles that come into the main stem and we've cut them beyond that point so that the stem stays intact and dries well. Also, you see the deep lining in the pumpkin and that shows off the face real nice. People cook with pumpkins and one of the ones that we have here is called a sugar pumpkin. It has a little bit thicker shell, less seeds, and makes a great pie or a great cooking squash. Pumpkins also now come in white and gourds come in stripes. Some of the old-fashioned heirlooms are actually a cross between a squash and a pumpkin or a gourd and these are actually all edible. This is called a Turk's turban and as you can see from the top the shape is like a turban. The little white mini pumpkins and this is actually a carnival squash. Very similar to an acorn squash, very sweet, great to bake in the oven and either add brown sugar or maple syrup and it produces a wonderful nutty sweet flavor. So when you go out to buy a pumpkin, one of the things that you should look for is a real nice stem. Hopefully it's still green, but if it's brown, it's okay. It just means that it's been picked for a while. And you just want to check the pumpkin all around for any soft spots. Sometimes it's a great idea if you want to preserve that pumpkin is actually to take a few drops of bleach and water and clean the pumpkin off so that if there's any dirt or there's any virus that's on the outside shell of that pumpkin, you're going to disinfect it so that that virus does not grow because that's what causes those soft spots. And that's what we have for your fall decoration. Thank you very much. Be on the lookout for more great tips from Jeff Doherty in the coming weeks on HCAM News. The Hopkinton High School National Honor Society inducted over 160 new students. The Athletic Center was packed to congratulate some of the hardest working and brightest students in Hopkinton. Here's a look. I would like to con congratulate the inductees on their remarkable achievement. 
You are the leaders of our school and the future presidents, doctors, scientists, athletes, and innovators that will change our world. You have taken an extra step to help out a fellow student or bring a smile to someone's face. Your academic excellence, strong leadership qualities, commitment to service, and character is the reason you are sitting here today. A leader is a visionary, a dealer in hope, as Napoleon once said. A leader takes action in the corners of the world that others are afraid or unwilling to act on, even if they must start out with only a small group of followers, or perhaps even alone. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, concerned citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. A leader should inspire and empower others. The function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not just more followers. I believe that the true meaning of scholarship should not just be learning, but the application of that learning. It is not just seeking knowledge, it is gaining knowledge for the benefit of others. It revolves around finding a problem that you're passionate about and solving it to better the world around you. We're a future generation of leaders and we should uphold that name. Now I know that school does not seem like one of the most entertaining places on earth, but it is important to understand that you're not learning just for learning, you're learning to make a difference in this world. One of my favorite quotes comes from the co-founder of the Life is Good Company, John Jacobs, who I was lucky enough to see speak during a, during a conference my sophomore year. This idea of his has stuck with me ever since. He said that whenever he found himself complaining about his workload or how busy he was, he would consciously change his perspective from saying he has to do something to saying that he gets to. This seemingly simple phrase, I get to, holds a lot of meaning, and I think it encapsulates the idea of true service incredibly well. Now, I'm a big believer in paying it forward. We all get to live and work in an amazing town like Hopkinton. Although school may seem like a chore sometimes, we often take for granted the fact that we get to receive such a great education. In the same way, we get to do community service and make a difference in this world. We are all lucky enough to get to have the time, capability, and opportunity to give back. Man, kids these days, they're so sheltered, aren't they? I'm sure we've all heard comments like that. I certainly have. And when I do, I often wonder, to which kids are you referring? Are you thinking of the little brats that thank me at the end of every single class? Or maybe it's the awful kids who shake my hand at the end of every practice. Maybe it's the kids who show up early to school and stay late just to study a little bit more. Self-absorbed, you must mean the ones who built a float for Hopkinton's 300th anniversary parade, who organize an annual blood drive, who volunteer at local charity events, and who honor the lives of those students who this community has lost throughout the years. Hurt feelings, oh I know. You're probably thinking about the kids who don't judge people based on their skin color, gender, sexual orientation, athleticism, body shape, personal interests, or their religious affiliations. Yeah, I really need to be careful with those ones. All right, at this time, will all the inductees please rise and raise their right hands and repeat the pledge. All right. I pledge to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. I will be loyal to my school and always maintain it and encourage the high standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. <laughs> September and October are perhaps the busiest months for events in Hopkinton. 
One of the events that recently took place back in September was the annual Poly Arts Festival. HCAM News was on the scene and talked to some of the vendors. Here is a look in case you missed it. Many local artists and groups were on hand for the 42nd annual Hopkinton Poly Arts Festival. The packed event took place on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Yeah, so I've always really enjoyed doing crafts, so I decided to do some crafts over the summer and then set up a booth at the Poly Arts Festival so we could raise money for Project Just Because, who's like a program for like underprivileged families in the local area and they help them buy things that they need, like food and clothes. All right, excellent. What are uh, some of the crafts you got going on here? So we have coasters and trivets, which are um, alcohol ink that we um, we did various patterns and we dyed them. We also have emoji pins, which are um, they're bigger and they shrink down to like a smaller size, like shrinky dinks, and we painted them to like various emojis. And then we also have string art, which we did in various patterns, and you put nails into a board, and you can do it in a whole bunch of patterns and characters. I was kind of just looking for something to like help the community. I really wanted to do some community service, and um, it's a, it was a good way to combine things that I like, enjoy doing with crafts and helping the community. playing some of my artwork it's Chinese brush painting and uh, I've got some of my prints and some originals uh, I also taken the originals and made cards and calendars I should probably show you the calendar the calendar has 12 different images and it's a CD that stands up by itself and um, yeah it's applied to different things coasters and cards and Prints. Yeah, this is all done by myself, and it's Chinese brush painting, Terrific. watercolor on rice paper. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So, is this your first year at Poly Arts? Yeah, it is my first year. Someone recommended, uh, Idaz actually recommended the show, so I, I signed up, and here I am. I uh, went to the University of Hartford Art School and I've been doing um, art for about 45 years or so, plus when I was a kid. But um, this is my recent stuff. I was started out as a sculptor and now I go on to painting, which I started about 10 years ago. Over here I have um, my Headless Horseman series, which I've done a lot of prints on, which I'm getting ready for the uh, holidays, uh, Halloween season. And um, I also do, I do a lot of uh, shows up in the coastal areas, so I do a lot of the um, uh, seascapes, and um, more so for Hoppington, I have uh, all this from the Hoppington State Park, and over here with the um, winter scenes. I sell um, birdhouses and bird feeders that uh, are handmade and made specifically for various groups of birds, uh, designed with their specifications in mind. I have a good time doing it, they're kind of funky, but we start out with the design requirements and then make them fun and happy after that. Uh, can you talk about what town you're from? And um, right here, right up the street between here and the high school. Alright, is uh, this your first year at Poly Arts? No, I think I've been here five years now the last five years. It's a good show, a lot of fun, a lot of neighbors. It is a very busy October on the HCAM channels. Courtney Taylor is standing by to tell you all about it with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Tuesday, October 18th at 6.30 p.m., Arthur Bergeron takes you through what a trust is and why it may be important to have one on Trusts 101. 
On Wednesday, October 19th at 6.30 p.m., the volleyball game against Westwood will air live on HKM Ed. At 8 p.m., Naomi and Annie Covino discuss the Brown Dog Coalition and how it helps dogs in need find homes on a new All About Hopkinton. They will um, see if the dog is the right fit for their family and, and we you know, assess and make sure they're good for that situation, whether they have dogs or cats or kids or um, adults and how long they're going to be gone every day and things like that. On Thursday, October 20th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Friday, October 21st at 6.30 p.m., the volleyball game against Medfield will air live on HCAM Ed. And on HCAM Ed, the National Honor Society induction ceremony will air throughout the week. To find out more about all of the shows HCAM has to offer, just visit hcam.tv slash connect, where you can subscribe to our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to find out about the many other Hopkinton events taking place, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view some cool upcoming events at the Center for the Arts and also view the latest Hiller Sports News. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and as always, thank you for watching.